hello again. Don Conroy here. You're very welcome to another Draw with Don. And you know, the other day I was out walking uh, by the seashore and I saw the beautiful cormorant. And I thought, hmm, I'd love to draw that. Uh, so I'm going to do, as you can see, a nice amusing version of the cormorant. And by the way, the cormorant is a very large aquatic bird. It's almost prehistoric looking. Um, and it's quite amazing when it comes out of the water, it kind of strikes a pose as if it's very important. You know? It holds its pose like this. <laughs> or else it's so wet that it gets up in the rocks and opens its wings like this because it doesn't want to stay waterlogged. And what it does normally is, when it's fishing, it, it goes around and it's, it's, its whole body is almost submerged in the water and its head's just above the water. And it looks around and then it sticks its head underneath. If it sees a fish, it moves forward and then gives a little leap, boom, and goes, and it can swim really down very, very deep in the, in the water. And when it comes back up, of course, it's, it has a lot of water around it. So it doesn't want to stay waterlogged. Gets up there and dries out its wings. But also, not only is it drying its wings, it's actually warming up its body, its tummy especially. Because you can imagine eating cold fish all the time. It doesn't help the digestion too much. So with a bit of sun on this body, its wings out, drying them off. <laughs> it's quite amazing. Okay, are we ready to begin? Good. So thinking of the head, again, think of <laughs> an egg shape. So we start off by drawing a nice curve like this, round like that. You just stop there and just imagine it coming back around like that. Now they have a long bill with a hook at the end. So this line goes out like this, bit of a hook, back around like that. And since we're doing a kind of a happy one, a bit cartoony, give them a little bit of a smile like that. And we put another line like that. Now, so you have the upper mandible and the lower mandible being technical. Uh, so the eye would do a nice sort of curve like that and then come across like this a little curve around here like that and then back up here put a, a little curve here which is the eyelid and then they have the eye like that so that's roughly the head and now we want to get the, the whole stance of the bird so we Start here, we go right around here into a bit of a curve like that. Back up here and then into another curve. And just make it a little bit wider there. Uh, as if it's got some fish in there. So then we go back up here. We bring the line right down like this. And around, we just stop about there. And back up again. I'm actually drawing the, the wing, as you can see, right down like that. Springtime, they're at the cliffs and they're busy having a family and the miracle of life, of course, takes place on the cliffs. There's so many birds and they all have their own special place. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, they only have what's one family. Uh, so it's a clutch of one, they may have three to four eggs. And of course, their eggs are kind of blue with little patches of white in them. And by the way, their feet are webbed. So that's the shape of the cormorant. And over here, we'll draw the one with its wings out. So we start up again, and again I'm using it a crown which is fairly blunt 
Uh, you could use a pencil or even a ballpoint pen. They're very good for drawing with as well. So you draw the curve, extend the line out like that. And then remember you're drawing a, a bill with a, a little hooked bill like that. And then we put the eye, we make the eye slightly bigger so we can see it well. And then a little black dot like that. And then the neck will go into a curve like that. And the same on the other side. Now as I said this, this is a cormorant. There's another bird very similar. It's actually slightly smaller. It's called a shag. So you have the cormorant and the shag. In actual fact, they're both cormorants, technically. Um, so have a look out for them both. Uh, one of the ways you know the shag, in, in, uh, especially during the breeding season, it has a lovely little crest and it has a green hue off it. So it looks kind of greenish. And just here on the bill, it's got very bright lemon yellow color. With the cormorant, uh, pretty dark, a little bit of brown coming through here. And it, when it's the breeding season, there's a big white patch just on its thigh and just below its neck. So these are little things to look out for if you're interested as well. You can tell. So we go up here and out like that, back around like that, up like that. So now you always remember when you're drawing, think of what you're drawing. Like I'm drawing uh, the wings here open. So just have a go. And again, don't worry about making mistakes. It's all part of the learning curve. Uh, the tail is, spreads out like that and around into a bit of a curve like that. And you can just barely see the feet here. So that's roughly your shape. And now uh, it's kind of sitting on rocks uh, out near this shoreline. And we can just indicate a little bit of seaweed there. Uh, bladder rack or, or whatever. Channel rack. All the different amazing creatures things you can see when you're walking. Now, so I'm happy with the drawing and now I'm just going to put a quick bit of colour on it. Maybe not then, but if you can that would be good, but try and uh, do a little sketch when you get back home. So here's a quick bit of blue across here like that. And I'll darken this part up like this, very quickly. Now it's great fun to be creative, really. Uh, because it also gives you a chance to really look at things. And when you look at things, you begin to see things. If you see a kingfisher or something like that, you're overwhelmed by the beauty the colour, you're surprised by the, the joy of the wonderful creature. Now, what I'm going to do is put a tiny bit of water on this very quickly. And again, I'm using uh, my watercolour crayons. Just get this done very quickly. And on like that. Now, would you believe that a, a bird like this can actually swallow a full salmon. It's hard to believe, isn't it? So they're wonderful uh, at fishing. And back in the 17th century, under the reign of the stewards of England, uh, a lot of the fishermen used to get a cormorant, put a rope around his neck, and get it to go fishing for the fishermen. And of course, they had the rope fairly tight, so the cormorant couldn't swallow them down, fish down. And maybe after about the sixth fish, 
uh, they'd give the cormorant uh, one of the fish for itself. You know. And you may think that was uh, just in the 17th century, but believe it or not, in parts of China, some of the fishermen do, the, do it today. So uh, a lot of people have interesting relationships with uh, fish, with, with birds, with mammals, and it's, it's quite extraordinary, really. Uh, some people uh, work with dolphins, uh, and even the big blue whale. And the whale shark, all these amazing creatures, uh, end up working some way uh, in collaboration with, with people. So that's when nature and man is perfect harmony. So anyway, that's just to give you a quick idea how to draw the cormorant. Uh, say, and when you're out for a walk, do have a look out for these amazing creatures. So I'll just put back the original. So I'm glad you're enjoying the programs. Thank you very much for all the kind comments. And I look forward to your company the next time. So do take care. And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you wish.